Hello, so Dr. Gay. I just read a couple of patients back to back, and they both had a midline posterior fossa fluid collection. These are very, very common. So I want to discuss these two cases and let you in on my understanding. And here we go. So this is a view, sagittal T2 weighted sequence, and we can see this large fluid collection back here. So when we see this, you think of number one, either a large posterior arachnoid cyst or a mega cisterna magna. From what I understand, they can be indistinguishable, and often I'll just say both. There's a large midline fluid collection compatible with a mega cisterna magna, which is just a normal fluid collection. There's always a cisterna magna back there, but it can be very large. So when it's really large, we call it a mega cisterna magna, and or a large arachnoid cyst. Now, this one is much larger than I typically see. Usually, it elevates the cerebellum. This one's behind it and it really pokes out here backwards. This is a long-standing thing. You can see the uh, cortex or the medullary cavity is uh, gone and the cortex is thinned here. So there's chronic bone scalloping. And this is a probably congenital process or long-standing rather than something new and worrisome. So I think this is just incidental, but this is a large one. And so if we go off towards the right-hand side, things look good. If we go to the left-hand side, this thing continues around the back here. Now note they also have some fluid collections here in the anterior to the temporal lobes. That's a really common place for arachnoid cysts. But there are some vessels in here, so these may just be prominent extraaxial CFS spaces. But now here's this main thing we're looking at, the large midline fluid collection that wraps way around here to the left along the transverse sinus all the way to the back of the temporal bone. It causes a little mass effect on the left cerebellum. Now if we go back to the sagittal images here, we note that the fourth ventricle is about normal in size. The brain stem is not displaced anteriorly, so it's, there's not so much mass effect that it's pushing here. And so that, again, goes along with a long-standing congenital process. And again, it makes no difference whether you come down on one or the other because uh, no one's going to biopsy this, so you never can prove you wrong, so the pressure's off. So again, just throw them both in there. Now, there's one other um, thing that could look like this, which is a dandy walker malformation. A dandy walker malformation is if the cerebellar vermis, this midline, um, area in the inferior cerebellum, if that's hypoplastic or aplastic, you can get an abnormal communication to fourth ventricle with the mega, with the mega, with the cisterna magna rather, and that is something you typically see with uh, children. They can, it's a congenital thing; they're born with it, and they have uh, problems. They usually find that right when they're born, so that's not something you expect in an adult. And again, you get these huge fluid collections communicating with the fourth ventricle. This one we can see the cerebellar vermis here. And the fourth ventricle is normal size, not communicating with this. This is not a, a dandy walker. And there's something called a dandy walker variant that's not as severe, and that could be seen when older people. And again, you have to look for that hypoplastic vermis and communication there. So this is the next patient I had, and I do see something very similar to that. Now this is an MRI of the cervical spine. Where we do see the base of the brain here. And on this case, we see the fourth ventricle here. The bottom of it does communicate with this. The cerebellum, if we go off to the one side and the other side, you see the cerebellum at that midline inferior portion here looks absent. So it looks like a hypoplastic or aplastic vermis and communication of the fourth ventricle. So this would fit with a what we call a DD Walker variant. On axial images, this is our highest cut and wanted to see on the axial images the fourth ventricle coming back into the cisterna magna and we're just a little bit below that. So I'm going to have them do an MRI brain to see that better. And uh, thank you very much.